Good morning, all. Today, we are learning from the Bible as our guide. Now that we know the Bible is the Word of God, let us look into what the Bible means to us. Today, we will discover that the Bible is our guide. Just like an owner's manual is a guide, for how to operate a car. When your family goes on a trip to a strange place, it is important to have some kind of guide to know where to go. What would they use for that? Right, a map. A map is a guide. Okay, let us continue. Our memory verse is taken from Psalm 119, verse 105. Children, read along with me. Let's take it. Are you ready? One, two, go. Your word 
is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Let's take it one more time. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Children, that is what the Bible is. The Bible is a light on our path. It guides us and directs us on which path to take. Let's continue. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Kings 22, verses 1 through 20. Children, turn with me to 2 Kings 22 and read along with me. Are you there? Okay, let's take it. Verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem thirty-one years. His mother's name was Jedida, daughter of Adaya. She was from Boscat. Verse 2. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. Verse 3. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azalea, the son of Meshulam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Verse 5. Have them entrust it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple, and have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord. Verse 6. The carpenters, the builders, and the masons also have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple. Verse 7, but they need not account for the money entrusted to them because they are honest in their dealings. Verse 8, Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan, who read it. Verse 9. Then Shaphan, the secretary, went to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord, and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Verse 10. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robe. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, the priest. Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Asaya, the king's attendant. Verse 13. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Verse 14. Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Agbo, 
Shaphan and Asaya went to speak to the prophet Huda, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tigba, the son of Hahat, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. Verse 15, she said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Tell the man who sent you to me. Verse 16, This is what the Lord says, I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people, according to everything written in the book the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Verse 18 Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Verse 19. Because you, your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become a cause and be laid waste, and because you tore your robe and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. God bless the reading of his word. Let's look at the discussion questions. Question 1. How old was Josiah when he became king? Think about it. Josiah was only 8 years old. Question 2. Where was the book of the law found? The book of the law was found in the temple. Question 3. Where, what were the people doing in the temple? Let's find out. They were distributing money brought to restore the temple. Question 4. What did Josiah do after hearing the words from the book of the law? He tore his robe and wept. He was not happy. This was why he tore his robe and wept. Question 5. Why was Josiah worried God would be angry. Let's find out. Because their fathers were not obeying God's word. Question 6. What happened to Josiah because he wanted to follow God's word? He was buried in peace and did not see the disaster. As God promised, Hosea died and he was buried in peace. So he would not see the disaster God is putting on the people who have sinned against him. Hey kids, did you know it's important for us to live in a way that honors God? You probably knew that. But how can we know what honors God? How can we know what pleases Him? It's pretty simple, really. He tells us all about it in the Bible. When it comes to honoring God, the Bible is our guide. And that's because the Bible is no ordinary book. 
It's more than just a storybook. It's inspired by God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 16 it says, All scripture, the Bible, is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. See, the Bible's no ordinary book because it's inspired by God and it guides us. Psalm 19 says that the law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new life. His teachings last forever. They give wisdom to ordinary people. The Lord's instruction is right. It makes our hearts glad. His commands shine brightly and they give us light. They are worth more than the finest gold and are sweeter than honey. By your teachings, Lord, I am warned. By obeying them, I am greatly rewarded. See, it's important that we let the Bible guide us because it gives us new life. It gives us wisdom and it makes our hearts glad. And if we obey God's word, we'll be rewarded. But there's one more very important thing that you need to know about the Bible. The Bible is actually Jesus speaking to us. This is a little tricky to understand, but it's important for us. See, the Bible is God's word. But the Bible says that Jesus is also called the word. Look at John chapter 1. In the beginning was the one who is called the word. The word was with God and was truly God. And in verse 14 he says, The word became a human being and lived here with us. That's Jesus. And that's why it's so important for us to find out what's in the Bible and then to do what it says. It's like Jesus is speaking to us and asking us to live in a way that honors God. And he does that through the Bible. Whatever we find in the Bible, we need to be quick to believe it and obey what it tells us to do because it's Jesus speaking to us. The Bible teaches us all kinds of amazing things about God. It's important for us to let the Bible be our guide. Take a minute now and talk about it. Life application. God's word is our guide in life. But it does, it does no good if we don't know what the, his word says. That is why it is important to read and study the Bible. The people in Josiah's time had an excuse. They didn't know where the word of God was, so they couldn't read it. But we have easy access to the Bible. We have no excuse for not knowing what God's word says. As mentioned earlier, God's word is like a lamp, a light to guide us. Us. The closer we are to that light, the better we can see what is right from wrong. The closer we are to that light, the easier it is for us to follow God and be protected from turning towards sin. Closing prayer. Let us pray. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn at your feet. Father, we are grateful for your word. We thank you for understanding that the Bible is our guide. And that, Lord, when we read the Bible, it is actually Jesus speaking to us. Because the Bible says Jesus is the word. And the Bible is also the word of God. We thank you, our Father, for this revelation today. We pray, O oh Lord that you will put these words in our heart. That, O oh Lord, as we live the life, as we live our life, we will turn to the Bible to guide us on the path to take in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that this will be the portion of every child in Cornerstone Chapel. Let this word illuminate their, li their life in the name of Jesus. Father, as we go into this week, we ask, O oh Lord, that you be with us. We ask that your light will show us the path to take in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have you ever watched a quick change artist? Do you know what one is? Did you ever want to be one? After next week, your answer to all these questions will be yes. How can we keep safe? 
three words that we need to remember. Hands, face, space. Hands, sanitize. Washing your hands often for at least 20 seconds or using hand sanitizer keeps your hands clean and free from germs. Face, wear a mask. Wearing a mask in public or crowded spaces helps keep you and others around you safe from germs. Cover your cough or sneeze. Use your elbow or tissue. Be sure to wash your hands immediately after. Space, social distance. Social distancing means we keep about six feet or two arms length apart from other people. This means we have to keep our hands to ourselves and stay at home more. When we follow the rules, we can be rest assured that this too shall pass. Then we can resume doing the things we love. With the ones we love, like we used to. Stay, Stay safe. safe! See you next week! <laughs>